Hi, this is your Hurricane Tracker video update recorded August 21st, 2011 at 4.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Well, we have a pretty lengthy video update for you today. We want to run through all the information on the developing situation with uh, Tropical Swarm Irene. There's a uh, couple of systems in the Eastern Pacific Basin weakening Tropical Depression Harvey and a very weak disturbance here in the Far Eastern Atlantic. I'm not going to really cover any of those other systems because they're not going to affect any land masses. And the only game in town this week is Tropical Storm Irene. So let's uh, get to it here. Now this is an animated satellite of Irene this afternoon. You'll notice it's a very healthy looking storm. It is an intensifying storm. Now these plots where you see the hurricane symbols was the uh, latest track forecast from the National Hurricane Center issued this morning. Where I have the X is where the uh, lo center of the uh, storm is located and the line projects a general west-northwest path that the storm is on. What I want you to take from this is notice that the center of the storm is several miles, probably 50 to, to 80 miles north of the uh, projected forecast points put out by the Hurricane Center this morning. This could have big implications down the road because first of all tonight it appears the system will track just to the south or even possibly directly over Puerto Rico and then uh, this track would take it north of the island of Hispaniola and we'll talk more about the importance of that in just a moment. Now here's the latest infrared satellite loop for uh, Tropical Storm Irene and I'm just showing this to get a sense of all the precipitation and heavy convection associated with the storm and also to show how large it is. This storm will cover uh, several hundred square miles uh, no, matter, no matter where it tracks. So if you live in Puerto Rico, uh, get ready for strong tropical storm force winds tonight with gusts possibly over hurricane force. And there is still a possibility the uh, sustained winds could reach hurricane force before it does cross Puerto Rico uh, later this evening. And of course there are Hurricane warnings in effect for Puerto Rico as well as the Dominican Republic and tropical storm warnings and hurricane watches in effect for the U.S. Virgin Islands. Now the latest track, as I mentioned, issued this morning from the National Hurricane Center had the storm going south of Puerto Rico and directly through the heart of Hispaniola. Now within an hour or two, the Hurricane Center is going to release an updated track and I do believe it will be pushed further to the north and uh, they should be showing a stronger system down the road as it appears it's going to have more water to work with and to strengthen than, uh, than the thoughts were this morning. The reason, uh, a big reason for that is the sea surface temperatures, one of the main ingredients tropical cyclones need to strengthen is the uh, temperature of the water of the uh, surface of the ocean and I've highlighted this area here in the Bahamas and Florida Straits. Typically, uh, tropical cyclones need water temperatures of about 80 degrees Fahrenheit to uh, strengthen and to sustain themselves. Here in this region, we're talking temperatures in the mid to upper 80s. Super warm waters from the uh, warm summer the southeast United States has had. So the more time the center of this storm spins over this warm open uh, ocean water, the stronger it's going to be, and it's looking uh, very possible that we can have a very strong system headed towards the southeast United States coast later this week. Now, the other big uh, wild card, the big factor, is going to be the island of Hispaniola. This track here over the center of the island is the current track from the National Hurricane Center, and it had the center of the storm tracking right over very high mountainous terrain. We're talking mountain peaks of uh, 8,000, 10,000 feet, which would do a pretty good job at weakening the storm and possibly having it as a weaker system as it approaches the U.S. But based on the, uh, the center of Irene reforming a little further north, this is the projected track based on current movements of the system and the current and the latest computer models from this afternoon take the center of the storm just over the northern portion of Hispaniola, possibly skirting the northern coast. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of flat terrain 
not very many uh, mountains up there that would disrupt the system. So over the next 24 to 36 hours, we're going to really have to watch and see if this center can cross these mountains. That's what we would like to see so this system can be uh, kept in check somewhat. Now the latest tropical models from this afternoon are in great agreement at uh, moving the system over Puerto Rico, over the northern part of Hispaniola, up through the Bahamas, and curve it north just ever so slightly east of the Florida Peninsula and up into uh, the Carolinas, specifically South Carolina. As you, meant, as you uh, saw yesterday, if you've been paying attention to the storm, the model consensus was more over the Florida Peninsula. So today they have shifted to the east greatly. And let's see and hope that that trend continues and see if we can get this storm to recurve or move north and stay off of the United States seaboard, as it is looking likely now that this could be a very strong system, as we'll show you in just a moment. Just want to show you this map with a cone we have placed here. Uh, the region in red is the area of greatest concern for a potential landfall from Irene. Obviously, there's still many factors and a lot of hours to go through before the system even nears the United States. But anyone who lives on the Florida Peninsula coastal Georgia, South Carolina, and up through North Carolina, as well as the central and northern Bahamas, you need to be paying very close attention to future forecasts for Irene, and you should have hurricane supplies on hand in case a major powerful storm does come your way. And you would need supplies on hand to last you several days in case you have several days without food, water, or electricity, and also have a plan in place in case you are ordered to evacuate and move to a safer area. This next map I want to show you is one of the uh, dynamical models, the GFS, one of the most popular and more reliable models. I'm going to just put this in a loop here and let you watch what it does with uh, Irene. It moves it off the northern coast of Hispaniola, pretty much misses Cuba, moves it into the open waters of the southern Bahamas, intensifies it significantly, significantly over those warmer waters of the Gulf Stream I showed you. Brushing up the east coast of Florida as a Category 2 or 3 storm and into South Carolina as a Category 4 uh, storm moving up to the northeast eventually as a tropical storm towards the northeast United States. Now these purple areas are areas of high pressure and the red areas are areas of weakness. Now tropical cyclones typically like to move into an area of weakness and you'll see this red area between the high pressure over Texas and the high pressure over the Atlantic. This is the area it's going to move through. Exactly where in that path it moves is still yet to be determined. But what I want you to take from this is the model this afternoon is developing a very powerful system. Again, uh, very similar to uh, the, the intensity of Hurricane Hugo. We hope this does not pan out, but this is a solution. Now the most reliable computer model, the Euro model called the ECMWF, is in excellent agreement with the GFS model we just showed you. This model also wants to deepen the storm very rapidly into a category two or three over the northern Bahamas, right it up the east coast of Florida, and then into South Carolina and Georgia borders as a very strong, uh, at least category, minimal category four hurricane. If, either, if these solutions played out, if the eastern half of the Florida Peninsula would experience very strong uh, tropical storm force winds or even weak uh, Category 1 hurricane force winds. Um, obviously, this would affect a great amount of real estate, and even the northeast United States would be impacted by some gusty winds and, and heavy rains uh, in about uh, 10 days or so. Now, one of the um, computer models that is the easternmost outlier, the CMC, the Canadian model, shows this system moving pretty far to the east of Florida, in fact, east of the Bahamas, making a turn towards the north and then clipping the uh, eastern edge of North Carolina and then moving right up the northeast coast. Now, this is still a slight possibility that it could move that far east and possibly clip the United States. But the uh, bad news is this model is not very reliable. It's usually one of the worst performing models. Just 24 hours ago, this model had, this, had the uh, 
had Irene going into the southern Gulf of Mexico, and in a matter of 24 hours, it has shifted uh, several hundred miles well to the east. So, uh, like I said, we can only hope that this is a trend that the other models will uh, will follow because we do not want to see a major hurricane striking the United States coast. Now, the westernmost outlier, the GFDL, uh, takes the storm south of Hispaniola over Jamaica and up the western edge of Cuba as a strong Category 4 or Category 5 uh, storm. It shows the Atlantic Ridge building to the west which would help push the storm into the southeast Gulf of Mexico. This, this, this model, sometimes it performs well, sometimes it doesn't. This is definitely the westernmost uh, model at this point. And uh, this gives uh, Gulf Coast residents good reason to not let your guard down. So I do believe, uh, we do believe, this system can go anywhere from the eastern Gulf of Mexico up th or, uh, or as far east as North Carolina, but the primary threat is going to be in that uh, in that cone I showed you from the uh, Florida Peninsula eastward up the coast through about North Carolina. Want to uh, end the video today with uh, the current threat level for South Florida as well as East Florida. Uh, we have you in the elevated category, meaning there's a decent chance of being affected by a tropical cyclone within the next five days. And as I mentioned before, you should have your hurricane supplies on hand and plans in, in place in case you need to evacuate. If the models don't change very much between now and Tuesday, come Tuesday afternoon or evening, we could see a tropical storm warning and hurricane watch issued for parts of the Florida Peninsula. And um, like I said, we could have a very strong hurricane headed for someone in the southeast United States. But let me advise that is still a few days away four to five days away, and the National Hurricane Center always advises in the long term, errors in the track could be two to 400 miles off. So I just can't stress enough, if you live in this area, please pay close attention and check in with the forecast every few hours as this situation develops. We have a large system already. We have very warm waters over the, uh, the Bahamas and the Florida Straits. We have the Gulf Stream warm waters up the uh, southeast United States coast and we have the latest models and the storm showing a more west northwesterly movement looking more likely that it may miss Hispaniola which would not be good in the long term for someone along the east eastern United States coast again I want to stress we're not here to scare anybody or or hype up the storm we're just here to present the facts and we think everybody who lives in this region uh, should know all the facts We'll be back with another video update if, if we see the conditions changing much. And, of course, we'll be updating the audio updates uh, a couple of times a day, most likely every afternoon. Thanks so much for listening and for being a Hurricane Tracker user, and we will talk to you soon. Have a great day.